One of the darkest parts of the Holocaust was the experiments that camp doctors would perform on many different Jews and prisoners inside the concentration camps. The name that is infamously linked to these experiments is the Angel of Death, Josef Mengele. During his time as a doctor in Auschwitz, he would liquidate and murder innocent prisoners for nothing but his sadistic trials and would take a particular interest in identical twins. Along with this, he would also select thousands of prisoners to go to their deaths within the gas chambers. However, after the war, he would never be captured and would never face justice. At the trials of the perpetrators of the Holocaust, evidence would be put forward about Dr. Mengele and how horrific his experiments were that inflicted so much suffering. But he would never be brought to justice. Join us today as we look at what happened to Josef Mengele, Auschwitz's angel of death. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. Josef Mengele would join the Nazi party in 1937 and the SS a year later. He would volunteer for medical service within the Waffen SS and would rise through the ranks. He would receive an Iron Cross first class during World War II for saving two soldiers from a burning tank, but after he was wounded and was transferred to the headquarters of the SS Race and Settlement Main Office in Berlin to work, and he became an SS Hauptsturmführer or captain in 1943. In 1942, Auschwitz, which had intended to serve as a labour camp, began to prepare for the final solution and was beginning to become used as an extermination camp. The main extermination part of the complex was Birkenau or Auschwitz II, and the SS doctors would be required to perform the tasks of selections. This was where only Jews who were fit enough to work were admitted into the camp, and those who were not were immediately murdered inside the gas chambers. Mengele would apply for a transfer to Auschwitz and was appointed as the chief physician to the Romani family camp at Birkenau. Mengele would visit the hospital barracks during his early days and would order prisoners who had not recovered in two weeks straight to their deaths. He would perform many selections and would also try to find a number of subjects for medical experimentation and would focus on twins. During these selections it was noted how he was often in a rather good mood, smiling at prisoners and even whistling at times. Mengele would also supervise the gas chambers and would be responsible for overseeing the gassings of thousands and declaring them dead. During an outbreak of typhus inside the women's camp, he would order one whole block of Jews, around 600 women, straight to the gas chambers. Mengele is most associated today with the human experimentations he would carry out. He would show no compassion or care for the victim's health, suffering or even safety during his trials. He would particularly look at twins, people with different eye colours, those with physical disabilities and also dwarfs. The test subjects were kept in better conditions than usual prisoners, with them being spared the gas chambers for a short period of time. They would live within their own quarters and were given better food. Mengele would refer to himself as Uncle Mengele when speaking to the children, and it was said he was capable of being so kind to the children to have them become fond of him, to bring them sugar, to think of the small details in their daily lives and to do the things we would genuinely admire. And then, next to that, the crematoria smoke, and these children tomorrow or in half an hour, he is going to send them there. He would kill a number of victims with lethal injections, shootings, beatings and also his experiments. His experiments on twins would be extremely sadistic, with him performing horrific trials, such as transfusing the blood from one twin to another, after one was infected with a deadly disease. One night he would murder 14 twins by simply injecting their hearts with chloroform. If one twin would pass away during the experiments, then the other would be simply killed for the post-mortem. He would even attempt to change the colours of eyes during experiments and carry out even more barbarism on the prisoners. Allegedly once he even attempted to sew two twins together to make conjoined twins. Mengele would leave Auschwitz in January 1945, in time before the Red Army liberated the camp. He would be sent to the Gross Rosen concentration camp and would travel west towards Czechoslovakia, dressed as an officer of the Wehrmacht. He would avoid being captured by the Soviets, but was taken as a prisoner of war by the Americans. As he was not on a list of being a major war criminal, and the fact that he did not have an SS blood group tattoo, he was released at the end of July 1945. Mengele would then gather some false papers and would alter his identity to Fritz Holman. 
who would remain on the run for a few months, and would even travel to recover his notes from Auschwitz, and would escape Germany on the 17th of April 1949. He was convinced and paranoid that he would become captured and executed for his war crimes. What would happen is that Mengele would use the rat lines established to help former SS members and German war criminals to escape to safety. He would travel to Genoa and receive a false passport under the name Helmut Gregor and would finally sail to Argentina in July 1949. He would be alone in his travels as his wife refused to go with him. After arriving in Argentina, Mengele would work as a carpenter and stay in a boarding house before moving into the house of a Nazi sympathiser in a rather wealthy area. He then worked as a salesman for his family's farm equipment company and would take trips to Paraguay as a salesman. It's also believed that during this time, in South America, he may have even practiced medicine in Buenos Aires, even possibly performing abortions. He would gather a copy of his birth certificate in 1956 from the West German Embassy and was given residency under his real name in Argentina. He would even receive a West German passport and travel to Europe, going on a ski holiday in Switzerland. Upon his return he would live under his real name and later would part own a pharmaceutical company. All this time the Allies would believe he was dead, but Nazi hunters would begin to collect information about his activities during the war. An arrest warrant for the Angel of Death was drawn up on the 5th of June 1959, but the Argentinian government would refuse to extradite him, and by the time this request was approved, he had already fled to Paraguay. West Germany did offer a reward for his capture, and with the news coverage in the early 1960s ramping up, Mengele would move yet again. He would even cross into Brazil, and would buy a farm. He would buy this with a couple of Hungarian expats, Geza and Gitta Starmer. These would later find out his real identity and were persuaded not to hand over Mengele. Mossad would even try to hunt him down and would consider a capture of Mengele after locating a European man thought to be Mengele in Brazil. However, the manhunt was called off in 1962. In 1969, Mengele and the Starmers would buy a farmhouse in Caceres in Brazil. But within five years, their friendship would die out. When the Starmers brought a house without Mengele, he wasn't invited to come with them, but the couple would instead buy a bungalow and rent it out to the former SS doctor. His son Rolf would visit him in 1977 at his bungalow, and at this time Mengele had returned to being a Nazi, who wasn't ashamed of his previous activities. He would suffer a stroke in 1976, and his health declined, having high blood pressure and issues with his balance. On the 7th of February 1979, he would visit his friends in Bertioga and during a swim would suffer a stroke and drown in the sea. After his death he was buried under the name Wolfgang Gerhard, but his story would not end there. In 1986, a mock trial for Mengele was held in Jerusalem featuring a number of his former victims' testimonies and a joint effort between the Israeli, US and West German governments would try to locate him. Rewards were offered for his capture. However, on the 31st of May, police would raid the house of one of his lifelong friends in Gernsberg. They would find a letter outlining that Mengele had died in South America, and quickly the police in Sao Paulo were alerted. The grave of Mengele would be located, and his remains were exhumed and subject to forensic analysis. After the inspections, it was confirmed with a high degree of probability that Mengele was dead and that the body was his. In 1992, DNA testing would prove his identity beyond doubt. Josef Mengele would be one of the most wanted war criminals after the Second World War, but his last years were plagued with the constant fear that he would be placed on trial and executed, like Adolf Eichmann. One of the greatest injustices was the fact that the Angel of Death would never face justice in a jury for his crimes. It's certain that should he have been caught, he would have faced a death sentence and the hangman's noose. Mengele has gone down as one of the most despicable men of the Holocaust and as a perpetrator who would commit gross evils in the worst hells on earth. Once again thanks for watching. To support our channel please make sure to subscribe and once again thank you so much for watching.